Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, again, to God be the glory. Uh, again, a blessed day and uh, day of election and uh, for our country, and uh, a lot of fascinating things are going on. And, and again, we want to give God the glory uh, uh, for that. Uh, the positives, uh, obviously, uh, playing for an outright uh, championship. Uh, you know, you play uh, nine games, and uh, it gets you to a point to where you need to be, and we're right where we need to be is playing for an opportunity to be conference champion. So that's that's just a great uh, opportunity that our team has brought uh, before us. I think the other thing is uh, we're playing at home. That's a positive. Uh, we got the uh, best fans in the country, and I know our, our fans are going to show up uh, for our game on Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Hopefully the city of Lynchburg, uh, all those can come on out and be a part of it and uh, to have a chance to root us on for, for a victory. Another part of the thing I think that our team has uh, been going on here is we're finding ways to win games. And uh, you have to find ways to win games throughout the season. Uh, sometimes you may win a game by 20, 21 points. Sometimes you win a game by one point. Uh, and you have to find a way to win games. And so I think we have been doing that throughout this season. Charleston Southern, uh, as we all know, they're a very good football team. Uh, they have a very good defense. They have a very good offense. They have a very good special teams. Jamie Chadwell has done an outstanding job since he's been there as far as to, to making sure that they've been the very, very uh, instrumental, uh, not only in the Big South Conference, but they've also been instrumental, as you talk about it, uh, in the polls as being rated uh, one of the top teams around. Uh, defensively, uh, they are a little bit of a mixture of um, a three-man, odd-man front and an even-man front. They'll go back and forth of doing that. Uh, they're number 14th in the country in their total defense. Uh, so they have shown that they can stop people. And I had to say uh, in the four or five years now that I've been here, I think that's the biggest improvement that this football team has done as far as Charleston Southern. They have really done a great job with their defense, uh, starting with their front seven. Um, they have two outstanding young men on the defensive end side of the ball there, Ellis on one side of it is, and Solomon on the other side, and they do a great job of uh, doing the things that they need to do. Um, so they do a great job in, in that aspect. Offensively, they're sixth in the country in rushing the ball. They're going to run the football. Run the football, play action pass. Run the football, play action pass. That's their formula, uh, and they do it quite well. The uniqueness about this football season here is they're doing it with three quarterbacks. Uh, again, they've really, in a sense, four. You count the person that's been injured. And uh, now they're playing three quarterbacks. They play one the majority of the time. They're Boussale there for the most part. But the other two guys, they do incorporate them uh, into the game. And uh, they all have unique skills. They all are very productive when they put them in the game. And so that's the uniqueness about it is, is the, they can put, put them in the game at any given time and they can be still efficient in running their offense. Um, special teams, we got to make sure that we keep everything in check with Darius Hammond. He is a, an outstanding kick returner, outstanding punt returner. Uh, now he plays running back for him, and so uh, we got to make sure that he does not allow him. We do not allow him to have any big plays uh, from um, special teams, and obviously from the offensive perspective too. But special teams, he's a dynamic player, and that's why they put him back there uh, with him. Sometimes they have Mike Holloway, the other running back too, uh, being back as a returner. Uh, the injured uh, Malik Matthews, uh, he's good to go uh, as far as this ball game here. Zach Fouts, uh, like he, he's good to go from last week. Um, Damon King, he's going to be questionable uh, for him there, an upper body. Aaron Campbell, he'll be good to go for this ball game. Uh, Sam Isaacson, uh, probable, a lower body. Um, and then I have to make a little bit of an announcement there. Tanner Hartman, uh, he has decided to retire from football uh, uh, due to concussions. Uh, so he came in yesterday and and it's been, a, I guess it's been now maybe around five to six weeks uh, of having to run a, uh, a lot of tests and different things going on and all that. And, uh, you know, it's a, you know, a tough situation, kind of a sad uh, deal there. I've been part of it in my life, had to make a decision to decide to give up football. And uh, so it was kind of an emotional deal there with Tanner uh, to, for him to make a decision that it's time for him to move on with his life uh, without football. So I wanted to make that announcement. We look forward to him to participating in our senior day here uh, with this ball game. Uh, the keys to the game, uh, uh, I think the explosive plays are really going to be so important on both sides of the ball. Obviously, from a defensive perspective, we need to limit their explosive plays. We need to get explosive plays. And uh, that, that's going to be a tremendous uh, uh, eye for me to be watching upon as far as making sure that we're able to win that part of it. 
uh, and always uh, win the turnover margin. The turnovers are, are huge factors in this game. Uh, every, every play is so vital like in any game. Uh, but this one here can turn the tide one way or the other uh, tremendously because both uh, offensively can score at any given time. And like I mentioned earlier, win special teams. Uh, we cannot allow them to have big play in a special teams. We must get uh, some big plays on special teams for us to have a successful football game. Open up the questions. Coach, when you think about what's on the line Saturday, uh, outright championship, chance to control your own destiny, where does this game rank as in, in terms of importance uh, just in the games you know, that you've coached here at Williams Stadium as far as home games? Uh, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it in that perspective. Um, you know, every game is always important that I coach. And, and uh, you know, whether it's a home or away, I think this one here is a home game. We have not had an opportunity, I, I guess, to win it in front of our home crowd in the four to five years that I've been here. So I think that uh, makes it somewhat unique and, and uh, uh, special from that point of view. But it doesn't change anything in my preparation, all those type of things of that nature. I guess you think about those things after the football game. But right now, we're preparing to try to play our best football game. On this role, you've been on five straight wins. Have you been able to point to one particular thing, or has it been a cumulative thing that's built up that's allowed this team to get on the role it's on? Well, I think they believe. They have faith in their teammates. Um, they have really a faith in our coaching staff. Uh, we've had to make adjustments in, in every aspect, on offense, on defense, on special teams. And I think it's shown a great job of how our coaches have been able to do a great job of coaching and teaching our players. And then also our players, uh, uh, they have bought into everything that we've uh, been able to do, making adjustments, uh, and they haven't wavered. Uh, and so they have stuck together uh, in this team. So I think that's the, if I had to say the one overall thing, you know, this team is uh, really uh, together as a family. They believe in each other. They have faith in each other. And uh, they all are working toward uh, Christ through, uh, through their Savior. Coach, your defense played great last week. The offense struggled uh, to score, put up points. How concerned are you about the offense coming into this week? Not concerned at all. Not concerned at all, because those are all uh, things that we can get um, corrected. Uh, it was more of us stopping ourselves. We had too many penalties. We had six penalties uh, on offense. And you know, you're not going to move the ball with any consistency. And uh, Presbyterian does have a solid defense. And so therefore, that's why the score was what it was. Uh, again, we'll get those things correctable. And uh, so we, we're, we're ready to find a way to win. That's always glad to see. So I know our guys will be ready to play. Our coaches will get our guys ready to play. And we should have a, a successful offensive performance. Buckshot, I mean, the, the numbers he's put up at times this year. And then you know to kind of struggle a little bit on Saturday. I mean, is it sometimes kind of easy to forget he's just a freshman? Well, I, I guess first of all, I would say I know it's always going to look like it's the quarterback, but it's not all the quarterback. Um, we unfortunately had some communication issues, uh, whether some of it was him, some of it was our old line, some of it was our running backs, some of it was our receivers. And so we were, uh, for some reason or another, kind of had a little bit of issues of being able to do what they're supposed to do. And so therefore, it looked like a little bit more confusion with a quarterback. And uh, again, there's still a couple of things he needs to get corrected. Uh, but I feel confident in him being able to, uh, to do that. So he's played well when he has to play well. He's made plays when he has to make a play. Whether statistically, it doesn't maybe say that. Uh, but he's made key plays uh, at the key time of a game here in these last two or three games. Charleston Southern's offense is focuses on time and possession. They also have the ability for explosive plays. How important will your running game be Saturday? Uh, continue to control the ball, control the clock, uh, averaging about 230 yards since Big South play. Is that important to keep that rolling so that way you can take some of the pressure off Buckshot and also maintain time of possession? We just want to be a balanced offense. We've always want to do that. We've got to be the most physical team. Uh, I, I think uh, the D-line or O-line, whoever wins the line of scrimmage, I think that's going to be successful. I don't know if there's a specific yardage or a specific average per rush that we need to have, but we need to have some successful plays on running the football uh, and making plays through that. So I think we talked about winning the explosive plays. We need to have some explosive plays. If it comes in passing, I'm OK with that. If it doesn't uh, come in the uh, running game, so all those things will be good from that perspective. So uh, we just got to make sure we do keep a balance uh, on our offense and we eliminate their explosive plays. Can you tell a difference uh, as far as in practice, knowing the players knowing that, you know, if they win this game, they're Big South champions. They're going straight to the uh, 
playoffs. Can you tell a difference, maybe a little bit more pep in their step this week? Well, we've had one practice there on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, I should say, and, uh, you know, they were spirited. Uh, you know, they're always uh, up and ready to go. They know what's in stake and all those things, but they keep their focus and put it in the right perspective. So uh, there's going to be uh, uh, ins inspiration uh, and there's going to be energy. And uh, so uh, this type of game, I always present that out. I'm not going to have to worry about trying to get our guys ready to play. Coach, talk about how the early tough stretch you guys had prepared you for this moment at hand coming up Saturday. Well, we've been through the tough times, so I know that we know that we can uh, uh, find a way to uh, have some success, and I think that's why you play very good opponents early, and sometimes you find out where your team's at, and uh, we got to find out pretty quick uh, where we were uh, struggling at and what we need to make some adjustments to um, as a coaching staff and that scheme and you know, all those kind of things, and we did all that. And a lot, like I said, give a lot of credit to our, our staff and a lot of credit to our players. And, uh, again, that's the results of playing a, a tough schedule early on, and you have a chance to make some adjustments. Uh, but you got to make them, and you got to continue to make them even every ball game. Senior day this weekend, a lot of these guys come from your first signing class here at Liberty. What have some of those guys meant just to the um, overall development of the program? Well, I think they admit that they have uh, believed in uh, what uh, myself and our staff have brought forth in the culture that we want to try to create it here. Uh, we always started talking about uh, we want to build champions for Christ. Uh, we always want to in involve Christ in our, in our lives. We want to involve Christ in our football team. We want to involve Christ in, in everything we do and everything we say. We always talk about our coaches to demonstrate certain things uh, from the scripture. Uh, and I think that this uh, group of kids who, uh, who they have bought into that um, and they have demonstrated that. And uh, so I appreciate all the things that they have done both on and off the football field. And they have represented Christ very, very well and represented this university and this football program very well. So that's what I kind of remember this football team is they have continued the winning tradition, but more importantly, they have continued the tradition of this university of always uh, being champions for Christ. This year you've faced multiple teams with mobile quarterbacks and run some variation of an option attack. Has that helped to have some familiarity with that going into this game? I mean, that always helped. We uh, always have played quite a bit of, a, if you want to say, dual threat type quarterbacks in the running game and all those type of things. And, uh, you know, that's not going to be a, an issue of how we need to prepare for it. Uh, our defensive staff has done a great job. Our players have done a great job. And, Again, I think we've, our guys will be ready to play, and we just got to be able to tackle well and uh, trust our eyes. Those are the most common things that we talk about is you got to have your eyes on your, on your work. Uh, then you got to trust your eyes, but you also got to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And if you do those things, then you're going to be able to be productive because we feel like we have good skilled players. You've won conference championships in your time here, but to have a chance to win it outright and to have sole possession of it, is that a little bit more special if you guys can do that? Well, I think it's special, uh, you know, anytime you're uh, to be a conference champion, period. Uh, I think all the other little things that come with it are, are obviously great. Uh, you, you make the playoffs, uh, you, you're in front of your crowd, and all those things are, are very, very pleasing. And, you know, we just want to give honor to God and uh, through him and our Lord and Savior. Special teams at times tend to be overlooked, uh, especially by fans. But last couple of weeks, uh, Dexter Robbins has had a couple of big blocks for you. Just how big have your special teams play been of, of late? Well, I think it's been timely. I guess our special teams have been very good in a timely manner. Uh, you know, we haven't had anything that's really gone totally elapsed. You know, well, we, we may miss a field goal. We may miss this and that. But that's human. Things are going to happen. But I think when the time comes, when we got to make a play, uh, special teams, uh, we, we, we come up with it. And that's what you got to do in, in every football game, whether you, you may use the term big game or not a big game, but the, every game's a big game because you have to win the games before you to get to the point where you're at today. And so special team has been very important. Scott Downing's done a very good job and uh, has been very good on our kickoff return there. Um, we got uh, Coach Stam kind of covers our kickoff return, so it's been a, a very, very good uh, so far. But this is going to be huge in this ball game. It's going to be a major factor. Uh, I hope the major factor in this game that is positive on us in special teams. There's going to be a play uh, that's going to be uh, very instrumental in special teams. Kind of a follow-up along those lines with the kick returners in this one, Hammond and Hickson. Uh, for you specifically, though, with Hammond kicking away from him, is that a, a line of thought? And then also along those lines, too, Alex had a couple go out of bounds on him this past week. Uh, 
just kind of address those concerns and just, you know, how you're going to go about it this week? No concerns. Our guys will be ready to play, and uh, they're going to have their best football game in this game. So I'm, I'm here very, very much so, a lot of confidence in all of our players. Is there any update on Jerron and Will playing in his place last week? How did he do, you thought? Uh, uh, Jagron Green is, uh, really has violated team rules until uh, he's been suspended. Uh, Will Brown is a guy that's really came in and did a terrific job of, of playing. Uh, he really showed me a lot of things. He's been um, a guy hadn't played a whole lot, but he has talent. He's a true sophomore. He played in his two years here, second year here playing. Uh, I just see a, a, a tremendous upside for him. I think he can be a dominant player uh, whenever he wants to. Uh, he's maybe been inconsistent. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see him respond like he did against Presbyterian because he has the ability. It was great to see him show up like he did. So is Green, uh, Green served a one-game suspension. Is that still imposed for this game, or is he, will he be available? Uh, he's violated team rules, and we're still investigating it all and see what happens. Yeah, you know, definitely uh, excited uh, about the way that we won. I really thought our guys played hard uh, and executed well. Probably one of our better games thus far this year where we've been able to execute from start to finish. Uh, you know, always good to be able to get turnovers. Uh, you can always help your chances of winning when you're able to do that. So I was real pleased with that. Also pleased with our third down. Uh, once again, we was able to get off the field. And then at the end of the day, you know, our guys just fought hard in the red zone. Opportunity to get them in fourth down and uh, block the field goal. Once again, it's a credit to, like I stated all season, how hard our guys work. They believe in each other. And there's no quit. And so I was real excited to see how I was able to put together 60 minutes of football. You know, as you get to Charleston Southern, we all know this is what you coach for, this is what you play for, an opportunity uh, to play for a conference championship. Uh, we do know we're going against a great team. Um, they're, they're very well coached. Uh, and uh, as you watch film and you look at what they bring to the table, uh, we definitely understand that we're going to have to put together a great game plan uh, what I've been doing is really focusing on Kennesaw State uh, and Jacksonville option type teams uh, and uh, thought those game plans were pretty successful. And so for me, it's really about allowing our kids to play fast. Um, and, and when you look at our film from last year and what we were able to do, and then you look at Kennesaw State and Jacksonville, I'm more concerned about us playing fast than trying to so-called out scheme and be ahead. Uh, because uh, right now our kids are playing at a high level, and uh, we were fortunate so far this year to play two teams that's been option-style teams. So just excited for the opportunity. Like I said, this is what you uh, work so hard for, for the opportunity to play for a conference championship. With playing so many option teams and so many teams with dual threat quarterbacks, does that help that scheme-wise the players are familiar with what you want to see in terms of how fast you want them to play sideline to sideline and, and therefore they have, a, I guess, more of an understanding of what you expect from them this week? Yeah, you know, definitely, you know, the season kind of helped us out uh, this year uh, as far as having an opportunity, as you stated, to play a couple of option oriented offenses, and then facing dual threat quarterbacks. Uh, you know, once again, the best way to learn is through experience. Uh, and uh, we've been blessed this season to get some experience to where our young men have been able to see firsthand what we talk about. As always, you can show it on film, but until they get in live action and mature, uh, you know, it's always just talk. And so I think this year we definitely had an opportunity to get some of that experience so our kids can see that uh, option style play. I know you mentioned a couple of teams, Jacksonville and Kennesaw State. Are there any similarities with Gardner-Webb in there as well? Well, uh, you know, to me, you know, option teams, uh, when you look at Gardner-Webb, uh, you know, we, we saw them more as a perimeter type team. Um, and, but when you watch uh, Jacksonville, Jacksonville University and Kennesaw, they, they do a lot more between the tackles. And also that's, you know, Charleston Southern. Um, they, they do a nice job, really both. Uh, 
Uh, like I said, I'm, imp I'm very impressed. I've always been impressed with Coach Chatwell and the way he's been able to implement his option style offense because he's really a dual threat as uh, far as the run. And then when you throw in the passing game, um, you know, they, they really keep you on your toes. Coach, you've had a number of uh, players that have missed games, whether suspension, injury, whatever it may be. But it seems like the reserves step in and you don't seem to miss much of a beat. You have more depth this year than you have in previous seasons? Well, you know, it all boils down to recruiting. You know, we enter into our fifth year. Um, I think, you know, uh, as I look at it, I, I see our recruiting has been very successful. Uh, you know, the whole objective, I remember when Coach Gill brought us in, he said, I want speed, I want guys that can run. Uh, and I want explosiveness. And, you know, to see the matriculation over the years that we've been here, as you stated, when we, we go to uh, our reserve guys, uh, it's not much of a fall off athletically. Uh, you know, now maybe some game experience and some adjustments we may have to make with our play calling. But, you know, that's a credit to our staff, uh, the way we go about with our recruiting philosophy, bringing in young men, knowing that they have to be developed, uh, and then teaching. Uh, because, once again, a young man can be very talented, but if he's, he's not learning what to do, he's just a talented guy out there, and uh, they'll do more to hurt you than help you. Uh, so, yeah, you know, um, I'm definitely excited about our future just because we're playing with a lot of young, young men. At one time in, in the Presbyterian game, we had a total of 10 sophomore and freshmen on the field playing series, not just one play here, but series. And so the future is bright because these young men, they believe in what we're doing. And, uh, you know, credit to our coaching staff, uh, you know, we've been able to teach them the game of football. Charleston Southern has beaten you the last two years. How much sweeter would it be to knock them off to win the title this year? And, and what in particular uh, d do they do that gives you guys trouble? Well, they're just a very good football team. Uh, you know, you got you got to execute. You know, anytime you're facing a team that you know is very well talented, well coached, it's going to vote on execution. And the last two years, they've done a great job of executing, and uh, we never have been able to put together a full 60 minutes of execution. Uh, and that's what it's going to take this Saturday. You know, when it comes to playing them for the championship, uh, the schedule saw that it would be like this. And like I said, we're just excited uh, and feel like we're playing – uh, better football in November than we did in September. So, you know, it's going to boil down to once again executing. Whoever executes the best will be that, uh, will have a great opportunity to win this, this game Saturday. Mike Holloway, how dynamic of a player is he? And the fact that he's able to rip off eight yards per carry, I mean, how is he able to? To have those kind of numbers? Well, because he's a special young man. And, you know, you could tell he's a senior. You, you can tell he really understands the scheme. I remember in 2013 when he played just to see the maturity. Now, um, I think, you know, he, he really knows what he needs to do. And I'll tell you this, I, I kind of got my bubble burst uh, watching film on Sunday. Uh, and I, I saw six on there. I said, oh, look at six. Well, where's 27? Where's 27? He changed numbers. So <laughs> I got a little excited. Uh, but once again, uh, when you start seeing number six run around, you really still you understand why he's a, a special young man. And so, you know, uh, they got a very special group of running backs. You, you got four running backs that are really g very good FCS uh, running backs. And uh, we know that they all run hard. Uh, we, learn, we know that from experience. We got to do a great job of game tackling, uh, rapping, uh, the ball carry up, um, but like I said, we're real excited about the opportunity. When you're going against a team that has multiple quarterbacks, Bushnell, guy who likes to throw it, Robert Mitchell, guy who likes to run it, what game plan do you come up with or do you have a base that you want to go with so that way they're prepared much like you had to do with Presbyterian and Kennesaw State earlier this year? Yeah, we, we, we got a base game plan. Like I said, it, I've learned is more about uh, the young men in, in our locker room. Uh, what what can they handle? Uh, what can they do at a fast pace of level? Uh, and so, like I said, uh, for us, uh, we, we feel like we got a game plan. It, it may be simple, uh, but you know, when you're facing uh, option teams and uh, doing my research, uh, really, no matter what scheme you come out in, it's going to be be about uh, defeating blocks uh, and putting yourself in good football position to make plays when it comes to the option style play. What about the 
question about depth a little earlier. I mean, I saw, I think, at least one series where Jalen McKinney and Lucas Irons were the only two linebackers out there. I mean, just talk about the trust level that you have in some of the younger guys and the emphasis of trying to get some of those younger guys more experience. Well, you, you guys know my philosophy is, you know, I'm trying to get as many young men as possible um, prepared to play. Uh, because we all know injuries occur, different things happen. And uh, I've learned from experience the worst thing you can do is put all your eggs in one basket, an injury occurs, and now you got to try to get a young man ready in three days, and you're fussing and yelling at him because uh, he's not doing it right. And, but he's never really had any type of experience because you never let him get reps. And so that's why early in the season, uh, as you see, we rotate a lot of young men because we're trying to find out who can handle the volume of live action. Uh, you know, because scrimmages, practice, you know, a lot of guys at times look good, but it's something about them bright lights. It's something about when the, the name gets called, who can step up. And we've been blessed this season to have several young men when their number's been called to be able to get those reps. And now that we're in November and we're having different situations come up, uh, we're able to go back to our stable and really get some good young men that's very young to play at a high level. Is your defense playing its best football right now? Or are they peaking at the right time? I ain't going to say we're peaking because I, uh, I felt good Saturday night, you know, with the win. Uh, but, you know, it's something about when you watch film. Uh, you see the mistakes that you keep scratching your head. Why are they still doing this and they're doing that? So, you know, we, we still got a long way to go. Uh, you know, like I said, I just think our energy and our confidence is where we need it to be to be in the month of November. Our young men believe uh, and they want to make plays, and that's half the battle no matter what you call defensively. Yeah, I think that uh, last week, you know, we moved the ball in chunks at times and, and, and did well. Um, but then we put ourselves in, in positions where we got an unfavorable down in distances, specifically on third down, uh, just because we had too many penalties, specifically uh, holding. Um, I think that's part, you know, that's par for the course when you're running a bunch of outside zone and perimeter plays. If you don't play with clean hands, if you don't, if you don't move your feet, oftentimes guys that may be more athletic than you or smaller will try to pull away, and uh, and you'll get a holding penalty. So. Um, that's something that we had to clean up this, uh, you know, this Sunday, and we're going to address this week as well. Um, but I thought our backs ran really, really hard. I thought, um, you know, we moved the ball at times really well, and others, you know, there were some, uh, you know, some drives that were, you know, cut short because of a drop football or a penalty of something, you know, uh, of that nature. Uh, looking forward to Charleston Southern playing another well-disciplined football team, very physical football team. Uh, they may be young. Um, but they still have just as much talent as they've had in years past. And uh, they're well coached, um, and you can see that they play with passion. So it's going to be uh, an excellent you know, challenge this week. Uh, Charleston Southern, from a defensive standpoint, what do they, what do, they do that can uh, you know, make, make life rough on you? Well, you know, the premise behind their system is disruption. Um, they're going to try to, you know, disrupt you at the line of scrimmage, try to recreate the line of scrimmage in their favor. And they play, uh, you know, all-out pursuit to the football. And that's a good brand of football to play. And so when you play teams of that nature that play all out, you know, you got to match their physicality and you got to play with, with more intensity and more urgency uh, than they do. You spoke of how when you get with such a big offensive line, you get quicker guys against you, might create some problems. When you look at Charleston Southern, do you think their size up front, you guys can find a way to overwhelm them, get a good push, and get that running game going so that way Buckshot can then be in favorable down in distances to get into a rhythm? Yeah, that's usually you know, the nature of, uh, of this profession when you play teams that are um, you know, maybe uh, a little lighter than you uh, weight-wise, um, but as athletic or more. You, know, you, you try to make sure you come up with a game plan that solidifies the run game so that you feel like you'll get a, a couple creases in different formations and different personnel groups, um, which then puts you in, a, like you said, a, a favorable down and distance specific on third down in which you feel like you can convert uh, and continue to, you know, to move the ball and keep that drive alive. Buckshot hasn't had his best game the past two weeks. Is there anything specifically that he, he has um, struggled with, or has it just been the defense's better game planning for him? Well, I'd say uh, two weeks ago, we played a really, really good defense. 
Um, that was probably at the time the best three and five football team, you know, in the country, really and truly. And so, um, you know, he had put himself in some bad situations because he just wouldn't throw the football away once we had broken contain, once they had everything covered. Uh, this previous week, um, he was in unfavorable down and distances that weren't really uh, his fault per se. And so we only had, I want to say, 15 pass attempts. And uh, a number of those were on, you know, third and long. There were significant, you know, yards to gain. And so uh, I really wasn't all that, um, you know, upset with his performance last week because really the game plan didn't call for him to have to make a lot of plays or a lot of throws. It just so happens that he was 5 of 15 on third down. A number of those came in that situation where it was, you know, 11, 12, 13 yards to go. Um, so with that being said, um, I don't think – the two teams that we played per se had a you know had a hand in him not performing well. I think it had to do with some self-inflicted wounds either at the quarterback position or um, or us you know offensively. We saw Stefan get in there for one play lineup as a second running back alongside Buckshot. Is that something that you want to try to implement here against Charles Southern? Give him a different look and get Stefan back involved in this offense. Well, like I said, you know all year long. Once he made a decision to go with Buckshot, we're always going to have that package in. Week in and week out, you're going to see a number of plays, you know, if you come out to practice that, you know, we have in uh, for those type of situations, those scenarios. The main reason being is a very dynamic athlete. And uh, situationally, if, you know, it presents itself, you get that package on the field, it could be very, very explosive. So we're always going to have that package in week in and week out. And we could care less about people knowing or not, you know, just know that we have that in, and that's always, uh, you know, on the table. Is there anything this Charleston Southern defense does that uh, maybe other teams that you haven't seen that you need to make any special preparations for this week? I can't put my finger on anything specifically. I think, you know, they're in line with a lot of, you know, great defenses that we played this, this season in terms of being disciplined being very athletic, um, understanding the design behind each play call that their defensive coordinator calls. You know, they're they're up there with, you know, some of the best in the country. You know, so with that being said, you know, you can tell that they're focused on being execution, you know, oriented and understanding what my assignment is and what my alignment is and the type of urgency I need to play with. You had some balance in the run game last week, a couple of backs at 100 yards. But to get the overall balance back this week, what's it going to take to run pass? Well, there's not a specific number per se in terms of runs and passes. I think each week the challenge changes depending on the personnel that they have versus the person that you have in. The personnel groups that you decide to use going into the game plan will dictate whether you need to throw the football more or run it. Um, we always talk about balance. You always want to be able to throw the football just as well as you run the football. Um, you know, last week's game plan kind of called for some more, you know, uh, run game personnel groups um, so that we could take some shots. You know, this week, you know, it's still young uh, in itself in, in the game planning process. Um, but, you know, it, it'll present itself on Saturday after we've gone a couple series what we need to do exactly to win the football game, um, depending on you know, the score and the situation. But, you know, we're going to have all the personnel groups that we've had in in weeks past, you know, on the table per se so that we can call the best game, you know, possible.